senior Russian military leaders recently talked about how Moscow might use a tactical nuclear weapon against Ukraine, according to reporting by The New York Times, citing multiple senior American officials. The Times writing, President Vladimir Putin was not a part of the conversations, but the fact that senior Russian military leaders, these generals were, even having the discussions alarmed the Biden administration because it showed how frustrated Russian generals were about their failures on the ground. NBC News has not independently confirmed that report. But joining us now is Ambassador Oksana Makarova, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States, as well as Carol Guzzi, a four-time Pulitzer Prize-winning photojournalist with The Washington Post, and Dmitro Kozatsky, uh, a soldier in Ukraine's National Guard who was held captive in the besieged steel plant uh, in Mariupol and took photos while he was there. Uh, Carol and Dimitro both contributed to the new book, Relentless Courage, Ukraine and the World at War, a collection of images capturing the humanity and the horror of the war. Remarkable images, I should say. Madam Ambassador, I know you wrote an essay for the book, and it's an essay actually about, you, know, you opened by talking about Max Levin, the Ukrainian photojournalist. He was always such a hero. So remarkable. I want to talk to you about that in just a moment. But first, let me ask you about some of this overnight news. First of all, the fact that North Korea is arming, according to the White House now, arming Russia with artillery shells uh, for its depleted weapons supply against your country. Are you aware of that? Were you aware of that? And how do you react? Well, we would not be surprised, unfortunately, because as we see Russia suffering one defeat after another on the battlefield in an in a honest fight, they resorted to terror against our civilians, our, our uh, infrastructure, uh, essentially eliminated the heat and water supply before the winter. And we saw already they turned to Iran, we saw already they turned to Belarus, so it's in a sense, you know, dictators, uh, a few of them, uniting in helping each other. We really hope we together would be able to stop them and with all the air defense and everything else, not allow them to create more damage in Ukraine. And this other <laughs> alarming report from The New York Times, is that something that Ukrainian intelligence has picked up, that Russian generals are talking about tactical nuclear weapons? We definitely know they don't have any red lines. All the atrocities we saw in Bucha, Izum, everywhere in Ukraine, everything that Dmitro saw while in captivity, I mean, there is no red lines for them. On the other hand, they want to scare us, and we should not be scared. We should stay the course, and we should win, Ukraine and all civilized countries. The, the, the hammering that your country is taking right now, how is that sustainable with Kyiv being attacked relentlessly, water, infrastructure, energy supply, you're heading into the winter. Um, how do you hold out under that kind of attack? It's horrible. It's devastating. It's very hard on people and it's inhumane. But we will not surrender. Do you have concerns about the midterms with restlessness, let's just say, especially in the Republican Party, but also some Democrats talking about less money for Ukraine? And now NBC News had a report in fact, that President Biden was getting angry even in a call last June with President Zelensky, who has been so heroic and is so admired, but President Zelensky was asking for more aid, and President Biden is under a lot of pressure politically here. Do you worry about not getting the aid that you need? Well, first, our discussions were always constructive between the presidents and between everyone here. And actually, the support that we feel from American people is so strong, and I don't see that being changed, and that support has always been very bipartisan. So, uh, again, it's we both our countries are democracies, there could be changes, and the changes are good. This is what differentiates us from Russia, right? But I'm positive that this fight is about values, and we, both countries, both nations, share the same values. So we really hope that the support will stay. I'm actually positive that the support will stay, because we have to listen carefully to what Putin says, and we have to defeat him while it's still in Ukraine. Well, Relentless Courage, this remarkable book, could do a lot towards explaining to Americans you know, exactly what you all face here. Let me bring in your, your colleagues uh, who have worked on this book. Uh, Carol Guzzi, I've admired your photographs for years. You've been in every war zone. You've, you're back from Ukraine. You're going to return, most likely. Um, so many Pulitzers. 
let's talk about you've you photographed the elderly women known affectionately as the babushkas um, talk to me about them and we can share some of these pictures um, yes, I did a lot of general coverage in Ukraine, but um, as I was following a, a group called um, Angels of Kiev, they're a humanitarian group of residents that just formed to help feed the elderly and bring medical supplies to residents. Um, it was while there was still a lot of shelling on the outskirts, and I started seeing all these ladies who stayed, and um, I just felt like, what, what would it be like if it was my mother, my grandmother, their potential targets? This is definitely a war of terrorism. It's not a traditional war fought on a battlefield between soldiers. There's so many targets in all of Ukraine that are civilians, and the toll is massive. And But they're such enchanting women, and they're so strong and so brave. And some of them can't leave, but most of them won't leave. They just they choose to stay for, for their own particular reasons. And I found, um, I found them to be inspiring, their spirit, their tenacity, and their determination. Well, your pictures convey all of that. Yeah. Dimitro, we all followed the siege of Mariupol without any visibility into what was happening. You captured, really, the, the horror of it from inside. Can you talk about what it was like during all those weeks and weeks in that steel plant? Uh, so, uh, in February, when Russia started uh, a full-scale uh, war against Ukraine, the Azov Regiment um, was based in Mariupol, and uh, uh, it was heavily uh, shelled and bombed uh, for 90 days. Uh, the Mariupol garrison, including the Azov Regiment, uh, fought till the end to defend uh, our land. And what made you take pictures? You wanted to document it. We want to show some of those pictures now. Uh, what inspired you to do that? Uh, I want to, to send a message. Uh, when, uh, when I uh, see the, uh, this uh, beam of light, um, I want, uh, in this picture, I want uh, to uh, send a message to my brothers in arms, uh, to all Ukrainians and all the people uh, who support Ukraine uh, in uh, his fight. And uh, uh, I want uh, to... Uh, uh, take a picture with this symbol. Uh, I think this uh, beam of light is symbol of victory, victory uh, of God over evil. And the beam of light that you speak of, this picture is the extraordinary cover of it. Um, Ambassador, when we talked about Maxim Levin, he was one of the first victims. He, he went missing in action, and um, his body was only found maybe a month later. But this was only weeks into the war. It was March 13th. You wrote about him. Yes, he was a dear friend, one of the brave journalists, so many who we have everywhere in Ukraine, helping to show the truth. He never thought about himself. He was a very beautiful human being and, uh, you know, full of light. And the fact that Russians would not only target our civilians, not only target our, you know, mothers and children, but specifically target also people who have press on their... Vests. He was wearing, uh, you know, the, the gear, which yes. says press in big letters. Exactly. And he, he had two, sh two gunshots, right? Exactly. So this war, like targeting, a, you know, talented Dmitro, who was a press officer, who was a photographer, who had, you know, just 26 years old, targeting old women who will not leave, like my mother, who would not leave Ukraine. And he, she came back to the north of Bucha as, as soon as she can. And targeting press just shows how inhumane this aggressive regime is and how this war is about the values, the democracy. It is defending democracy and our way of living in Ukraine for all of us. Do you think there will be accountability for war crimes? Oh, I'm, I'm sure it will be, and we will not stop until there is accountability. We all need it, not only to punish those who did these horrible crimes in Ukraine, but to prevent all others, we need to send a very strong message that it's not okay in the 21st century to do this to a peaceful nation. Ambassador Makarava, thank you very much. And Dimitro, uh, thank you for your heroism and for the record that you have shown. And of course, Carol Guzzi, um, so many Pulitzers, more to come. And great gratitude. And the book is Relentless Courage, Ukraine and the world at war, and it is simply remarkable. Thank you. Thank you.